Howdy! How's all my YouTubers out in YouTube land today? I hope you're feeling well. I'm still fighting this uh, pneumonial bronchitis thing I've got cooking. Um, hopefully, it'll go away soon. I know I can't take much more of this, but um, hey, I keep persevering. I have to do a little bit of creative stuff every day or I'd lose what's left of my mind. So today, what we're going to be doing is engraving on the top of a, it's a lid to a tin. I received a tin. Oh gosh, it's been a long time ago I got this thing. And I've always thought I'd like to do some engraving on it. And now seems to be the opportune time. Uh, I do have my turbo carver. This, uh, this is a, they call it a power carver. It's uh, from SCM, and uh, it is an air compressor carver. I've got a number one bit in it that is designed to carve on metal. And I've picked this nice little design from my peel and stick patterns that I've put on the top of it. And all we're going to do is just go around this, and this is like writing with a pen. So it does sound like a dental drill. I will be muting when I'm drilling because I know there's some people that are sensitive to that sound and I don't want to uh, hurt your ears. So we'll be shutting off the, the noise, but you'll be able to see what I'm doing here. And if it turns out nice, I've got some paint up here and I'm going to paint her up. So uh, we'll get started engraving on it and you can watch how this works. If you have any questions or anything, please post them in the comments of the video and I will get you an answer back. Um, and be sure and hit the like button. Share this on your social media so everybody gets to enjoy the process on this. And I'll mute now and get started drilling.
Okay, we'll turn the microphone back on here. I have done the design up, and uh, it's easy to see on this metal, on a, this pattern that it has been etched out because, I mean, you can easily see the lines. It's a lot easier to see it on here than it is on wood. On the wood, the pattern tends to blend in, whereas on this metal, it's standing out. And so I know I have a complete pattern etched out now with the engraver. So now we've got to remove the off of the metal. And we'll see how our engraver turned out on there. And again, just like with the wood where you've seen me remove the pattern, it's going to come off in pieces because we got through the pattern all over this piece. We'll start by pulling the outer part off and any little pieces that want to come on with it. And it's wanting to stick to me here. Let's get it off. There we go. And just start by pulling up anything that's already showing up as loose. Well, it's sticking to me like a burr rabbit in a tar baby. One thing I did forget to mention is that when you're doing the engraving, regardless of what surface you're engraving on, you always wear your eye protection. I do have my safety glasses on here. Trying to get under the edge of that pattern without scratching up my design. Just want to get under the edge of it and get it loosened up. And if I can get a hold of it. As you can see, I'm design etched on there. It's really nice. When you're using the engraver, you just use it like you would a pencil. You don't press hard. You just let the engraver do the work. If you're going to do it with a Dremel, if you don't happen to have an engraver and you have a Dremel and you want to do it, use a diamond bit. Use the straightest, pointiest diamond bit that you can get. As you see here with this one, it is just a little point on the end of it there. It's not round, it's a point. And you want the highest speed on the Dremel that you can get for for drilling on or engraving on metal. Well, One thing sure about this uh, peeling stick, it's not going to move around on you when you stick it down. It sticks, sticks, sticks to your work surface. No? I am pleased with the design.
that went on there nicely. And this will make a nice little tin for just about anything you want to put in it. If you want to put cosmetics in it, keep it in on your vanity or on the sink in the bedroom or if you wanted to put cookies in it in the kitchen. Nice little tin. Keep some of your craft supplies with it in it in your craft room. Be nice to gift to someone that you think might appreciate it. Just about got it off of there. Just a little bit more to go. Do you see how pretty that design's turning out on there? That's nice. It takes longer to peel off the pattern than it does to actually engrave it. You could just leave it this way if you wanted to. I prefer maybe to lay a little bit of paint to that. We get it all up off of there before we attempt to paint it. All right, now we've got the design engraved on and we've got the pattern off. Next step is to clean it and paint it. To clean it, I'm going to use alcohol because alcohol dries quickly and it takes off any impurities, any metal uh, bits or dust or anything that might be on there. So we're going to put a little alcohol on a paper towel. We'll put the lid back on the alcohol so we don't spill it. And up here and just wet it down real good. Paper towel and alcohol. Now, we've got our little butterfly and it's got some little flowers and leaves around it. And we want to do a little painting here. And I think what I would like to do, I've got some of this Martha Stewart pearl paint and I think I'm going to do my flowers. I feel I feel a little springy today because uh, the temperature is supposed to get to a wind chill factor of 30 below here tonight. Uh, and I do not want to dwell on the winter. So what I'm going to do is paint something kind of springy here. Mercy sakes alive. 30 below. Zero. Crazy temperatures. Now I'm taking my micro brush and I'm just going to paint in these leaves or these petals with this pretty yellow pearlescent 
paint. The micro brush is very, very small. You can see it compared to my fingertip there. It's just color. Now we put a, leave a little break there in the petal because the butterfly's antler or antenna or whatever you want to call it, it uh, is going right through those two petals. You see, I'm just dabbing the paint on. So many people here lately have told me that, oh, they can't paint. They can't art. They can't do this, that, and the other thing. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Look, I'm not Einstein. Um, see, look at that. I just drug my the edge of my tin right through the paint. Wipe that off of there before I get it all over everything. You just need to practice is all. I mean, we all did art when we were in grade school, didn't we? They started that started us out with coloring and gluing and finger painting and all that. This is no different. Just different tools. If you could do it then, you can do it now. And if it doesn't look any different now than it did when you was doing it then, it just means that you just need more practice at it. You can do anything you put your mind to. Don't let anybody tell you that you can't do something. One level best way for me to get me to do something is tell me I can't do it. So there we got one yellow flower painted. And we're not trying to put that paint on, you know, so to cut it with a knife. We're just trying to put a little bit of paint to the petal. Remember, all painting is impressionistic. You probably hear my cockatiel in the background here. He's my supervisor and uh, my art critic. He likes this. He's singing a song about it. Fred. 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 They don't want to hear you. Stop it. Yeah, I think he got the hint. He can be pretty obnoxious when he wants to be. But he's the best co-host I've ever had. Let me tell you what. He works for Birdseed. <laughs> he don't give me a bunch of drama and a bunch of foolishness. He's a nice bird. Nice bird and a great co-host. He's always available at a moment's notice. Yes, and he compliments me. Did you hear that? Say he's complimenting me. Even, even when I've been sick <laughs> and look like death warmed over, there he is to compliment me. You fellers could take some hints. <laughs> no matter how bad she looks, be willing to give her a compliment. He knows where his seeds come from. Okay, we've got two of these flowers painted. Now we'll go over here and we'll grab this one. Get this one painted. Okay, Fred, they know. It's enough. You're being obnoxious now. Fred! Oh, Lord have mercy. Silly bird. He's a silly, silly bird. But I love him. I've raised him since he was a little chick just come out of the egg. 
I never can tame him though. I, I let his mommy and daddy raise him. So he's not hand tamed. But he's a sweetheart. Until you stick your hand in the cage, then you think you'd stuck it in a buzz saw. But he tries to talk to me, sing songs, and compliments me, critiques my artwork. And I tell you what, he can be one heck of a critic. Wow. Now, here's another one where the antenna goes through the, the pedal, so we're just going to leave a little break in it there. See how I did that? You don't go over the antenna, you just leave a little break. Just pick up a little paint. So put it in the area where the pedal is. I just, when I put it down, I don't know if you're noticing this, but when I put down the paint, I just tap it on. I'm not using any kind of brush strokes. I'm just tapping it. And inside the lines there where the pedal is. And that's how we do that. Now I'm going to wipe my brush off. And we want to put a little bit of white down here on the palette. Now, when I say palette, I'm, I use this little silicone mat here. You probably can't see back there. There's where the one put the paint down. And that's probably way too much white paint, but you may use some on a butterfly too. We'll put in the white centers. And these little daisies. I've always been partial to daisies. I don't really know why. My mother was never much of a, a gardener. I never grew any flowers. The only flowers we had in the yard are the ones that the lady that lived there before we moved in had. She had some pennies and some roses and then there was wildflowers of course on, on the farm come up all over the place but i've always liked daisies they just they're, they're pure they just seem the purest of the flowers to me then we're going to want a little bit of green and yeah. had some green up here Put down just a little bit of green. Do these leaves with down here. Now this is the same brush. I just keep using the same brush, but I wipe it off in between. Colors. Sometimes you gotta move it just a little bit in the light to see exactly where your lines are there on it. The way the light's shining on it tends to kind of blind me. Oops, and I don't have it up where you can see it, do I? There we go. Get it turned around here so you can see what I'm doing. Be helpful. I'm just tapping it in. So it's kind of pulling some of that paint off. I had it on a little thick. So I'll pull it back a little bit. There we go. And now we've got to do our butterfly. Now the body of my butterfly needs to be kind of dark. And I don't need any black paint up here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I've got some navy. 
what you're doing in a Navy. Like, there we go. Wow, that's way too much. Come out of there, it comes out in a hurry, don't it? Just do the body of the butterfly first. I want my butterfly to be springy and have a lot of color. So I want to put just a little hint of that on these antennas. It's way too much of a hint right there. Hold it down a little bit and pull some of that back. So if you put a little too much down, you can just pull it back. Now we've got the outer part of the wing, the inner parts of the wing, and we've got the little dots over here. And the little dots I'm probably going to do in maybe to match the body. But let's see here. We're going to do, I think, a purple and pink butterfly. Like I said, I want him to look springy. We'll use some of this apple barrel purple. Oh no. Let's do that. Let's use the pearl. Just a little bit of Martha Stewart's pearl. Put it right around inside. This design here. A wee little bit. I don't think I'm getting that up where you can see it. Let me pull this camera up a little bit here, maybe. Oh, come on, camera. There we go. Let me get it where you can see it. And that's way too much. So we take a little of that off there. And here we get this one. And then we'll come down here and get this. Get right up to the line without going over. And don't be afraid to wipe your brush down a little bit if you think you got too much on it. You can always add more if you need to. Get a good eyeball on that design there. Put it in here. Right in there. Right in here. That's your little butterfly. You can make them any color you want to. It's all up to you. Once I get him all painted, I'm going to give him some time to dry. And then I'm going to hit him with a couple coats of acrylic uh, 
gloss sealer. Seal them all up, we're good. That way it won't get our design scratched. Before I do that though, I'll put my signature on it. I'll assign my work. Be sure and share this on your social media so everybody gets to enjoy the process of what I've done here. Give it a like. If you haven't subscribed, please do. I will subscribe back to you. I do a live show every Monday night at 8 o'clock. Even on holidays. I live alone, so every day of the week is just another day to me, whether it's a holiday or not. Alrighty, I've got that design pretty well in there now. And it's going to be time to do the pink part of it. So let me wipe my brush off and I'll look at these paints. This one is called Taffeta, and this one is called antique silk. I think we'll go with the taffeta for the pink color on the butterfly. Sounds like a plan to me. And won't be long till we got it finished. I've got the Pink part, and then I've got to do the little dots on the wings. I'm probably going to do those in navy to match the body. so you can see it. So my paint was just a little thick there, so I just move it right on down this line right here. Go right around these little dots. You see areas where it's a little thick, go back and pull it out. So now this looks like a nice little spring picture. Take your mind off of the bone curdling cold. So now there's not quite enough, so we'll add just a little more in there.
have to keep moving my head around here a little bit to get the glare off of it so I can see where the little dots are. But I need to fill in with the blue. All right, we'll wipe down the brush. And maybe just a little more pink there. Let's see, just a little more around the edge of that. There we go. A little more right here to the edge of this. There we go. That looks good. All right, now wipe down the brush. And I'm dragging the tin through the paint again. All right. So there it is. Now we're going to come in here with a little navy. We've got some little spots on the wings. In with this navy to match the body. Just like that. Then we turn it so I get a little bit better bird's eye view here. See my etched lines real good. Put the little spots in there. Come back to this side. Come in just a touch darker. Over here on this side. Now I'm going to kind of twist around, look at it a little bit, make sure I got everything covered the way I want it. Looking good to me. So there you have it. That's how you engrave and paint on metal. I to use just regular acrylic paints. Dabbed them on with a micro brush. So there you have it. So I hope you enjoyed this. Um, I've got to put my initials on it and seal it yet, but hey, for the most part, it's done. And uh, again, if you like it, give it a thumbs up, and we'll see you in whatever I come up with to do next. Remember, Brenda's crafty. Be like Brenda. <laughs>